welcome to episode 9 of Breaking Bread. Today it's me, Devil Potgeter, and I have the privilege to share the word of God with you. So, the last episode was Brother Harvey, and he spoke about the finished work of Christ. That we don't have to go and redo what Christ has done. And we need to know that Christ, what he has done, is enough. And for us to carry on from this. Okay. So, yesterday we had uh, Sun was Sunday, it was uh, Resurrection Day. So, my nice shirt on. Oh, you can see my shirt. Yes, okay. So, He is risen indeed. Amen. What a privilege we have to have a God who sent His Son to die for us. We are the only religion whose God, whose God died for us. And guess what? Not, not only did he die, but he overcame hell, he overcame death, he got risen again. So awesome, man. So in that was Jesus is risen. Okay. So Harvey spoke about what Jesus has accomplished for us. If you missed it, please go back and follow episode 8. We go through it again. And so I want to continue tonight. So now that Christ has risen, what is our role to play? Now that Christ has finished the work, what do we have to do? How do we play our part in this? So what do we have to do? What is our part as Christians? And then how do we become what Christ has really paid for? So, give me a quick example and give you is if you buy a brand new car, let's say it's a brand new car, state of the art car, and first time you are seeing this car, you buy this car, and now we drive around and say your windows are open because it's a bit hot outside, and you come to your friend's house and your friends are like, oh, that's an awesome car. Um, why is your windows open? And you say, well, um, it's just very hot outside and I'm getting hot inside the car and your friend asks you what about the aircon this car has got uh, different zones that you can control so everything is regulated inside the car and you're like what so then you are getting hot in a car that is equipped to have different temperature zones in the car and because why you don't know what it is capable of. Okay. And that is the same problem with us. We don't always know what we are capable of. So what is our job? Our job is to find out how do we get to use what God, Christ has paid for. How do we implement? How do we do our part to become more and more like Christ? Because God says that we need to grow into the stature of Christ. So God's got a measuring stick. So his measuring stick is Christ. So if this is God's measuring stick, this is Christ, and we are now there. So we need to grow up to Christ's level. But how do we get from there to there? Okay. A lot of times we want to try it on our own. We want to do things and do things and do things. And when we are doing things, we end up making really bad decisions. We end up doing or making very bad mistakes because it's all about us trying to do. Okay. So how do we solve it? Well, maybe we need to stop looking at us, trying to become like Christ. If you want to get to know somebody, if you want to be like somebody, you have to look at that person. How they walk, how they talk, what they do. Because else, how can you imitate that person? How can you learn to be like that person if you don't follow them, if you're not looking at them? So, that's the secret to being a Christian. Christian means Christ like ones. 
So we are supposed to look at Christ so that we can act like Christ, so we can become more and more like Christ. To access what He has paid for, which is already inside of us. There is no need to go and try to get it. It's there already. It's not in top, it's inside. Okay, Inside. It's not outside, it's inside. So how do we get it? We put our focus on Christ. I'm going to share uh, first verse in Hebrews 12, verse 1 to 2. So Hebrews 12, verse 1 to 2 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great cloud of witnesses, let us strip off and throw aside every encumbrance, unnecessary weight. Okay, so here it starts off with, what do we need to do? This is our part. Okay, Christ has done his part. Now we need to play our part. We need to act on our part. So first it says is, throw aside every encumbrance, unnecessary weight. So we need to throw off all weights. And throw aside and that sin which readily, doubtfully and cleverly clings to and entangles us. Okay, so we have to throw off the weight. Unnecessary weight and then, and that sin. Throw off that sin which so readily, doubtfully and cleverly clings to and entangles us. So it clings to us, it entangles us, then we can't walk, we're stuck. Okay. So we need to throw it off. Take it, throw it off. Okay. We need to stop it. So, and let us run with patient endurance and steady and active persistence the appointed course of the race that is set before us. We need to get our eyes on the goal. The goal is to become more and more like Christ. So it says, let run with patient endurance. Patient endurance means we are patient and we are enduring. Yes, some days will be easier than others. Some days we will lose our patience. But it says patient endurance. So even in the bad days, we have to endure it. If I'm going down the wrong path, I'm not feeling very really Christ-like today. I have to say, wait, where's my focus? Where's my eyes? I need to become like Christ. Am I looking at Christ? Am I focused on Christ? Okay, so endurance means we have to patiently endure. So we have to do it over and over. It says in steady and active persistence. So endurance and steady and active persistence. You have to keep on doing it. We have to keep on focusing on Him. When you catch yourself not focusing on Him, you have to actively and persistently refocus on Him. So, persistence, the appointed course of the race that is set before us. Verse 2 says, looking away from all that will distract. So that is our part. We have to look away from all distractions. It says, looking away from all that will distract to Jesus. Here's the key. Look away from everything that distracts you. The enemy is busy, circumstances are busy, life is busy, distracting us. Taking out focus of Jesus. So it says, look away from these distractions. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen. It says, who is the leader and the source of our faith? Jesus. He's the leader and the source of our faith. Giving the first incentive for our belief. Okay. He is the one that we believe in. When we believe in Christ, when we come to Christ, we believe in Him. He says, He is the one giving the first incentive for our belief. His incentive for our belief to become more and more like Him. That's why we believe in Him, because He has paid a great price for us. He has set us free, and we can become like Him. Okay, so He's the one who gives us that first incentive. He says, and also it's finisher, bringing it to maturity and perfection. Christ is growing our faith. It says, bringing it to maturity and perfection. 
Jesus is start of our faith. He is also the finisher. He brings it to maturity and perfection. So how do we do it? Keep our eyes on Him. As we look onto Him, He grows our faith because our faith is on Him. Amen. He, for the joy of obtaining the prize that was set before Him, endured the cross. He knew what was on the other side of the cross. And He also went through a time as like, do I really want to do this? In the garden, He prayed. And it says, water and blood came out of him. That's quite intense prayer. If he wants to pray to God and say, God, please let it cup pass me. But yet, not my will, let your will be done. So God's will, or Christ, surrendered his will to God. He saw the price set before him. He knew what was coming. And before him endured the cross, despising and ignoring the shame. Can you imagine the shame we went through for you and for me? Innocent, totally innocent. But he took that road to Golgotha. And on that road, people spat on him. They plucked his beard. They insulted him. Here's the Prince of Peace, the Lamb, the perfect Lamb, being insulted, being spat on. Being hit. So, and he's now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. He saw himself sitting in at the right hand of God. Accomplishing what he had to do on the cross. With his eyes on the goal, he persisted. He endured. Okay. So our eyes should be going to heaven. Enduring whatever happens on earth. Keep on going, keep on doing what God has planned for us to try and get to the stature that Christ, that God has planned for us. The stature of Christ to become the person, the man and the woman, which God preordained, which God, which God pre-planned for us. How can we get there? By following the word of God, by looking on to Jesus, by looking at him, looking at the end goal. We need to become more and more like him. He is growing our faith. As our faith is on Him, we become more and more like Him. And that's awesome. So that's the first thing. We need to keep our eyes upon Jesus. We have to endure. We have to strip away everything, all the weight. All the weight. I mean, this time that we are spending in lockdown, it's really opened our eyes to a lot of weights that we are carrying normally, which we don't see. And now is a chance to see those weights. God is amazing. He is showing us what we need to do. Amen. So the second verse I want to go to is in Romans 12. So both are in so it's Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, and we're going to Romans 1 and 2. So that's quite easy to remember. Okay. The key steps to getting where Jesus wants you to be. Amen. That's awesome, man. I just love the Word of God. Okay. The easier it is, the better. Come on, let's keep it easy. Stop trying to do all these things. Just focus on Him. Look at Him. He's the perfect image. He is the perfect example. Okay, it says, imitate Him. So let us imitate Him. Let's go to Romans 12, verse 1. Verse 1 says, I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, and beg of you in view of all mercies of God to make a decisive dedication of your bodies. Okay. Jesus once said, throw off everything. All the weights that so instant it is so easily entangle us. Now this one says, make a decisive dedication of your bodies. So we need to make a decision. We need to decide. Okay. So it's presenting all your members and faculties as a living sacrifice, holy, devoted, concentrated, consecrated, and well pleasing to God, which is your reasonable, rational, intelligent service and spiritual worship. Wow. 
is going back again, it says, to make a decisive dedication of your bodies, presenting all your members and faculties as a living sacrifice. Okay. Holy, devoted, consecrated. We need to make a decision that our life will be consecrated, holy, and devoted. A living sacrifice. So we have to do sacrifice. Like Jesus paid a price for us, we have to do things that is not always so nice to do. We think it's not nice to do. We have to live our life, whatever the Holy Spirit tells us. We have to be obedient. Sometimes that will take your time. Sometimes that will take your time away from family. Sometimes it will touch your bank, your money. A lot of times we want to serve God with everything, but not our money. Money, I don't know. But part of, he says, your whole body. Presenting all your members and faculties as a living sacrifice. If God tells you to do something and you need money, you just need to do it. Because He is going to provide. He's a provider. Amen. Okay. It says, and well-pleasing to God. Well-pleasing to God. We need to be well-pleasing to God. That is, that is our objective. How do we become like Christ? Like Christ, we become well-pleasing to God. It says, which is your reasonable service and spiritual worship? Reasonable. Okay. It's not even, this is just getting in there. This is not even exceptional. This is just normal worship. This is what God wants from us. To live for Him. To make a difference. We need to give everything to Him. If you want to become like Christ, we need to give everything to Him. We need, when He says go, we go. When He says stay, we stay. We need to be obedient. Amen. So verse 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, this age, fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs. Okay. Do not be conformed to this world. Do not be conformed to this world. Don't become like this world. Don't let the world dictate you. Okay. Fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs. But be transformed. Changed by the entire renewal of your mind. Okay. Be transformed. Transformed into what? Into the image God has planned for you. Into the image of Christ. So it says, be transformed by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideals and its new attitude. So we get a new ideal, we can get a new attitude when we are in Christ. Okay? When we're not conforming our eyes. Sorry, that dog's up at the answer. Let's try again. So when our eyes are upon Jesus, we get a new attitude, okay? new ideals says that you may prove for yourselves what the good and acceptable perfect will of God so that what is the good and acceptable perfect will of God Amen. so when we do this we get to prove what is the perfect and acceptable will of God even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his in His sight for you. How do we do it? Renewing our mind. Renewing our mind to what? To what Jesus has done. To renewing our mind to look at the Word of God. Spending time with Him to follow His example. Amen. So, let's read in King James. So it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what what is that good and acceptable perfect will of God? Okay, so here it says, renew your mind. Okay, by renewing your mind, be transformed. But it says that we, it says, be ye transformed. Be ye means that God is doing it. You're not doing it. Only thing you're doing is renewing your mind by looking at God, what is His will for us, Keeping our eyes upon Jesus. That is how we are getting transformed. By looking at 
Jesus. So you want to do the work of God? Look at Jesus. So we need not to look at the world. We not, don't do what the world does. Don't do what the world forces you to do. You don't have to be have to conform to the world. You have to renew your mind. Okay. And as we renew our mind, we are getting transformed. Be ye transformed. It doesn't say do ye transformed. Transform yourself. It says be transformed. So by focusing on Jesus, by putting him first, we are being transformed. We are being changed into the image of him. We are growing into the stature of Christ. How awesome is that? So now we are growing. By So he's done his part. Our part is to put our focus on him. Our part is to look at him. Our part is to get rid of the stuff. We have to make a decision that we want to follow him. We have to live a life. What do we need to do? We need to change our lifestyle to a Christ lifestyle. Christian lifestyle. To be like Jesus. How can we be like him? By focusing on him. By renewing our mind to be like him. Okay, so when we focus on him, our minds are being transformed. Our lives are being transformed. We become more and more like him. That's awesome. So I want to thank you for watching. I just want to speak a blessing over your life tonight. That God will just touch you and bless you tonight. May you have godly encounters the rest of this week. May Father just touch you tonight with His love. May He show His love to you. And as you put your mind on Christ, as you renew your mind, let Him change you. Let Him transform you. Make a decision to let Him transform you. By putting your focus on Him, put everything aside. And may He bless you in Jesus' precious name. So the next will be Job. Brother Joe will be sharing with us the next one. So thank you for watching. God bless.